In this video, I want to introduce you to how we can sketch loci on an argand diagram of equations of this form. So z take away z1 modded is equal to the mod of or modulus of z take away z2. Now, what I want you to think about first is what would this be if it was z take away z1 modded is equal to some number k, for example. Now we know that that's going to be a circle, okay? So it's kind of like you've got two circles here, okay? Now, what I wanted you to do is think back to constructions. Now, have you ever uh, done the construction for a perpendicular bisector? So let's say, for example, I wanted to find the perpendicular bisector of here's a point and let's say here's another point okay so two points find the perpendicular bisector how do you do that okay but using constructions on a page so you get your pair of compasses so here's my version okay and what you do is you put the point on that one and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use um, a circle here so I'm going to just use the full extent and I'm going to draw an arc down here okay and I'm going to keep the point on and I'm going to draw another arc up here okay now what's important is that you keep your compasses at the same length here right so I don't change the radius of the circle Okay, so I'm going to make an arc there, and then I'm going to bring it back up here and make another arc. Okay, right. So, where those two cross, I am going to draw a line, and that is the perpendicular bisector of those two points. Okay, so that's how you can construct it on a page or on a whiteboard, like that. Okay, so the idea here is that essentially it's like where two circles are intersecting. Now, each one of those represents a circle, they're intersecting. Um, now, the radius of the circle, clearly, it, you know, for construction purposes, I had to make sure that the radius of the circle was big enough so the, the two circles would intersect. Otherwise, you're going to get one circle here, one circle here, OK? Um, but, of course, this will uh, vary, OK? These lengths will vary. So you just need to make it sure it's big enough, OK, in order for them to intersect. So what this represents is a perpendicular bisector. Okay, between the two points. Now, this would be your z1, this would be your z2, okay, or vice versa. So, let's explore this a little bit further using an example. So, let's say we use the example of z take away, and let's let z1, um, let's put it at uh, minus 1. So we're going to have plus 1. And let's make this um, minus 4i, shall we? So let's say z plus 4i. OK? Now, there are two ways that you can go about finding um, the perpendicular bisector here. Now, you can use old school methods, so A-level maths, first year, perpendicular bisector. Okay, so um, let's draw a real axis and an imaginary axis. Okay, then what I'm trying to do is I'm finding the perpendicular bisector between minus one, zero, so is minus one, and 0 minus 4. 
okay? So zero minus four, so somewhere down here. So perpendicular bisector is gonna look something like, uh, something like that, this step, okay? Right, so using first year A-level maths techniques, the first thing that I would do is I would find the midpoint. So minus one plus zero over two, zero take away four over two. So minus a half and then minus two. Okay, right, then the gradient will be the difference in the y coordinate, so 0 take away minus 4, divided by the difference in the x coordinate, so minus 1 take away 0. So we're going to get 4 over minus 1, so minus 4. So the equation of the perpendicular bisector would be y plus 2 is equal to the uh, negative reciprocal of that, so 1 quarter, x plus a half. So, in y equals mx plus c form, y equals 1 quarter x, and then we're going to have a um, quarter times a half, so 1 over 8, and then I've got to take away 2, haven't I? So, minus 15 eighths. Okay. So, 1 quarter x, take away 15 eighths. So, something like this. So this is your minus 15 over 8. And then you've got that point there, which is when y is 0. So we're going to have uh, 15 over 8, and then I've got times that by 4. So 15 halves, isn't it? 15 halves. OK? Right. So that is my perpendicular bisector. And that's using first year level maths techniques. And that's perfectly fine. OK, now you might be going, OK, well, OK, that's how you can do an A-level maths. Is there any other way of doing it? Well, yes, there is. Um, now, this way that I'm going to show you is a perfectly fine way of doing it. Um, and I like this method. But what's also good about it is that it shows you how you can tackle complex loci problems in general, so beyond what's necessarily on your specification. Okay, so if, if you were given something that looked really weird, this is the way that you could go about dealing with the problem. So remember that z is equal to x plus iy. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the z's with x plus iy. Um, blah, blah, and plus 4i. OK? Right. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to combine the real parts and the imaginary parts within the moduli. So we've got x plus 1 plus iy. And then we've got uh, x plus uh, i times y plus 4. So... The modulus of this complex number will be the square root of x plus 1 squared plus y squared. And the modulus of that one will be x squared plus y plus 4 squared. Square both sides gets rid of the square roots. So I've got x plus 1 squared plus y squared is equal to x squared plus y plus 4 squared. Right, expand the brackets. x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus y squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus 8y plus 16. Now, what's neat about this is that the x squareds and y squareds go. They're all gone. Now, what I've got left is I've got this uh, 2x plus 1 is equal to 8y plus 16. So 8y is equal to, uh, we've got the 2x plus 1 take away the 16, so 2x take away 15. Divide through by 8, so we get y is equal to 1 quarter x 
take away 15 over 8. And that was the equation of the perpendicular bisector that we sketched right there. OK, so that gives you another way of going about it and getting to the answer, um, which really, once you've had a go at a couple doing this, it's really not too bad at all. And you might uh, favour it over the basic A-level maths method. I mean, but it, at the end of the day, it is up to you which method you use.